What we're going to do this morning, we're going to have a discussion. I really hope you're all going to get involved because you're all in the creative industry. So I think everything we discuss is going to be interesting to you. So feel free to be included. The first question I'm going to ask is for you, Catherine. How do you go about choosing fabric for a scheme? And at what stage of your project do you actually choose the fabric? Obviously, the, the normal way would be to uh, get your schematic design done and your floor plans and your layout and you choose your furniture and then you go and choose fabric. I don't do it that way at all. It's actually the fabrics that drive my design. The other thing I think is really important with fabrics is to get textures and not just to have your plain fabric. So this actually is my favourite, favourite. And it's quite new. It's new. It yeah. new. It's new. This upholds us beautifully. The kids can wipe their hands on chocolate with it, come straight off with a bit of scotch guard, and it's fantastic. And I know this comes in four different colours. This is, I think, the, the fabric that we piped it in. So use your fabrics wisely in terms of upholstery. We've used this many, many times as curtains. It hangs absolutely beautiful. And we've done two castles, and we've actually lined the, the walls with this fabric. Not only does it keep the electricity bill down, but keeps the heat in, and it makes it a really, really cosy room. Perhaps I can ask you, Rita, when do you choose the fabric? Well. Do you I do the right opposite, the actually. No, I spend quite a lot of time going down the, the route of the plans and the rooms and the flow and the on, the on the building, really, before. And I find it useful that way because, you know, that takes a few months, a couple of months at least, and it really informs you of the building, of your client, of the life that's lived there. And I find... And I think this is true of just the lay person too, to walk into a room and say, so what colour do you think this should be? And what, what do you see? And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, it's, it gives me a sort of panic. But when you go, or when I find that I go more slowly, I get my sort of bearings at my bottom on the seat in the house, so to speak. And it starts to just feel more friendly and I understand yeah. it more. And as you're going along that process, I find that the things start to seep in. And as I'm going, around showrooms and looking at things, that house is very much in my mind and it starts to come together. And then I'll start to really pull through the fabrics. It depends very much on the clients because designing or decorating for a client in the UK must be completely different to what it is in America, for example. The Americans I love because they love shopping and they love yes. all of it. So they want the whole house to be decorated. Whereas the English might tend to say, Oh, no, we don't need to worry about the bookcases yet, although don't, don't, don't buy an ashtray, for God. We do that. <laughs> when actually, the Americans like, we want it, or we want you to do the walls. We like, they, the English are more reserved in that way. How do you choose the fabric for your shirts? And do you have a specific collection every season? What I like with the, um, which is we do a lot of bespoke in the shirt making as well, what you're doing much more is just paring it down to doing it the best quality possible, the best fit, obviously, whether whether it with bespoke, but with the cotton. So as you were saying, with the weights and things for a, for a, sh a shirt, you know, absolutely crucial. The time of year, the climate. Other man likes being cold or hot. You know, whether he feels the heat or the or the cold. Um, so it's about the technical and the fabrics, and then you're just doing a thousand ranges of blues and whites and a tiny bit of pink here. And there. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned quality. And that's something which I find really important to my company. Can I ask all of you that question? How do you manage in your projects to keep the quality to the sort of excellent level? It's your supplies that you've used over and over again. And, you know, who delivers on time with uh, no problems, stitching is perfect. Uh, we, you Obviously, we do. Uh, go and check every single piece before it's delivered. You can do that less with the, the people or the supplies that you've been working with for a long, long time. But things, you know, like joinery, you have to check every single piece. Um, I, I think quality is everything. It takes years to build your business and seconds to destroy it. The people, the crafts, mm. people that you work with, are absolutely fundamental to it. Funny enough, people never remember that something has been delivered that's not as good because they didn't have the budget. So you've had to go outside of your usual priority, yeah. priority and, and your usual team because the cost is too much. A, it always costs you more money because there's no safety net to put things right. And you are only as good as your team. The stress you go through to try and save somebody a bit here and a bit there 
it's never worth, it's never, nobody's happy. It's also something I find with, with husbands is that, and I hear this <laughs> quite a lot, is that they can understand Bill's the life. value in the architect, because he's got all these letters and things after his name, and <laughs> worked six years like a surgeon to get it, whatever. <laughs> and they can understand the, why they need the builder, because actually if the, there'd be no bricks or the one. They have placed no value on the interior designer until the end. That's why repeat mm. business is so nice because you've been through that yeah. and they've understood the shears and they've gone through the thing that these things don't work. Actually, the interior designer brings a lot to the job. How do you get your product, your projects finished and delivered on time? The management of that, I always say for girls in the shop, we have a work in progress file, which we have, which is this fat, and we have um, sort of eight weeks worth of, of men's shirts who often fittings take a little bit longer. But I think communication is quite important, in fact, and. If you keep, if things do go wrong and a mill closes or it's suddenly you're told that it's out of stock or it doesn't have, blah, 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 as long as people are kept informed all the way along rather than three months after it was meant to be delivered, yeah. not be, you know, mm. that's when people get really angry. The other thing mm. is pick up the phone and call the owner. I mean, how many times I called you, Bernie, and said, Bernie, yeah, yeah. You, you're saying it's out of stock, you've got it in America, it's Russia, you've got it, I know, mm. find it. What is the, the most difficult thing you find buying a fabric? Is it? the colour or being out of stock? Nowadays I think with the digital age I think it's much easier because most people can have their fabrics online and it makes the whole line of communication m very very different from some huge warehouse with the fabric and some somebody's got to go rummaging around and find that that, that rolls um, over now. There has been one time actually when I really wanted a fabric and everyone said no and I'm like check the world no it's gone so then you can actually go to the owner and say do 20 Meters. I mean, if it's a sofa, it's, it's going to be 24. Yeah. And, and ask for 24 and say, come on, 24 is a good, it's a good meter edge. You can do this. Working with people who can do, who can do mm -hmm. small amounts, who can do minimums, yep. um, is um, it's one of the only other fabrics I buy, a beautiful Bernie fabrics. And actually, our <laughs> shop, my link with the interior decorating and Bernie, and another, is our whole shop is wall to wall, and all the walls in the changing room are all Delacronia. I was so <laughs> excited because actually Emma's used our very first Paisley, I don't know if you know that. It was actually before it was in the collection. It was the tiny little design. And there it was on the changing room walls. I was delighted. <laughs> and I've done the antique Paisley for a dressing gown and a, and a smoking jacket for men and a few for women as well, over and over and over again. And I've had, because we have it in the winter, we put it up with a sort of black tie, silk shirt, bow tie for smoking jacket. And then we just have the very luxurious dressing gown. You've got some amazing clients. Who has been your most inspiring or surprising commission to date? I got a call, a little text on my mobile. Emma, I would very much like it if you could come and visit His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales to measure him for shirts at Clarence oh. House. So oh. I said, oh, that would be amazing. And um, so, which, which I did do, yes. So, and he has be, he's been a wonderful client. And on that note, I'll say thank you so much to thank the three panellists. You've been absolutely brilliant.